My name is Christian Wilbur, and today I'll be pitching PJT Partners. I started with a top-down macroeconomic look at the current M&A advisory space, as it has one of the strongest deal pipelines that we've seen in a long time, and I wanted the fund to have some exposure to that. I found PJT Partners, which is a firm that has a very diverse offering of its portfolio of services, has a 28% growth CAGR over the last five years, an ROE of 126%, an ROIC of 42%, and is in a strong growth phase that has potential to gain significant market share going forward. PJT Partners was formed in 2015 after the divestiture of three Blackstone businesses, which included their advisory services, restructuring, and fund placement. This resulted in one of the most diverse offerings of advisory services from an investment bank, which includes top-rated fund placement, strategic advisory, strategic capital markets, shareholder engagement through the Camberview acquisition, and a world-leading restructuring service. Advisement fees made 86% of revenue in 2020 and were up 52.5% year over year, while fund placement fees through Park Hill were 16% of revenue and increased 22% over the same period. The firm is headquartered in New York City. PJT currently trades at 14 times 2022 EPS, well below its five-year average of 18. It has one of the largest historical deal pipelines currently, has robust restructuring demand as firms need to assess their balance sheets post-pandemic, and has strong profitability metrics with growth potential as management only thinks that it has achieved a fraction of its size. Because of these factors, it is recommended that PJT be added to the AIM small cap fund with a price target of $98.30, representing an upside of 26.6%. My first driver is the strongest historical M&A deal pipeline that PJT has ever seen, which is up 49% year over year as of end of March, even after increasing revenues 53% in 2020. A larger portion of these deals fall in the $1 to $10 billion bucket, as larger firms are beginning to resume transactions post-pandemic. They have been able to achieve this growth by increasing client-facing partners 55% in the last few years, which has not only increased bandwidth for deals, but also expanded industry verticals that they operate in. Additionally, it's estimated that $415 billion worth of SPAC acquisition power is possible in 2021. PJT gains an advantage in gaining these deals, from history with SPAC book running experience. The second driver is PJC's Park Hill division, which acts as a placement agent, performing all aspects of due diligence, marketing, and other advisory services to place funds into alternative asset classes. In 2020, they were the top fund agent with an aggregate capital placed of $27.6 billion. In the later half of 2018, they acquired Camberview Partners, which was an acquisition to increase not only client outreach, but also added services of shareholder activism and corporate governance to their advisory portfolio. The benefits of these synergies are starting to take place and have helped increase revenue in 2020 by 22%, despite being a very tough year. The final driver is the firm's restructuring business, which is one of the largest in the world and accounts for roughly half of all advisory revenue. Competition is weaker in this area as bulge bracket banks tend not to operate in the restructuring space due to conflict of interest, leading to weaker barriers of entry. PJT should benefit in the near term from robust revenues as firms are restructuring damaged economic models coming out of the pandemic. In the long term, heightened global leverage, technological disruption, the use of intangible assets, and cryptocurrency as an emergence of a balance sheet item could drive growth further. For the valuation, a price target of $98.30 was achieved using a 60-20-20 weighted DCF, PE, and EV to EBITDA multiple, resulting in an upside of 26.6%. The DCF yielded $115.92 with a WAC of 7.41% and terminal rate of 1.25. The PE resulted in $78 with a peer multiple of 14.58, while EV to EBITDA was $65.33 with a multiple of 8.54 times. The sensitivity analysis on the DCF 
ranged from $90.51 to $165.55 using terminal rate and WAC as sensitivity inputs. Risks for PJT include the availability of capital that's allocated into alternative assets. Placement fees are completely dependent on the inflow of capital that goes into these investment classes and can change as portfolio managers change allocations within the funds. Advisory demand is a strong risk as poor economic conditions could lead to a decrease in advisory revenue across all services, and profitability could be an issue as current expansion efforts would make it harder to scale back into a recession, leading to lower operating margins. Paul J. Taubman is a founding member of PJT and has served as both chairman and chief executive officer since founding the company in 2015. Prior to this, he worked at Morgan Stanley for 30 years, having roles such as global head of investment banking and co-president of institutional securities. Helen T. Meats is in the position of CFO since 2015 and also worked at Morgan Stanley as a managing director in the global capital markets. In conclusion, I think that PJT is a great recommendation as it has strong growth potential that we've seen in previous years as management has been able to effectively scale up the business for heightened demand, as well as support from profitability metrics such as ROE and ROIC. It's trading well below its average forward multiples, and economic conditions support all lines of the business, as the M&A deal pipeline is the strongest it's been historically. Restructuring revenues should be robust as balance sheets are constantly changing in the near term and have been hurt in wake of the pandemic, and investments into alternative assets have started to flow back to normal streams at the latter half of 2020. If you have any questions, please contact me at christian.wilber at marquette.edu.